Hello everyone and welcome to another vlog. I hope you all had a wonderful week slash weekend last week. Today I am going to be talking about the Disney website Disney Plus and some of the pros and cons of using slash having a subscription to that website. So let's just jump right in. Uh, first of all, I'd like to talk about the pluses to having Disney Plus. So obviously it is a really great platform to watch a lot of Disney movies, especially Disney movies that have been put into the vault. For those of you that don't know what it means when a Disney film goes into the vault, it means you can't buy it anywhere, you're going to have a hard time finding it online or something like that unless someone has illegally pirated it, which to each their own, you do you. I watch pirated videos sometimes, that's just how it is. Um, <laughs> but Disney Plus has brought out a lot of the videos that are on, um, or that have been put into the vault and they've got them all in one place where you can watch them. And there are so many movies on there now and they're not just what you think of as Disney movies now as they just recently bought a 20th Century Fox and all of the properties that come with that. So along with having the animated Disney movies, you also have the live action Disney movies, and then you have other movies as well that are not Disney, but they are now owned by Disney and are available on the Disney Plus platform. There's also a bunch of Disney shows that are on there um, from Disney Channel and like the Saturday morning cartoons that you watch when you were a child. A lot of them are on there and they're continuing to roll them out as Disney Plus grows and becomes a more sturdy platform to view these media on. So it's really cool and it's really exciting. Um, obviously another perk of the Disney Plus platform is the original shows like the Mandalorian. I almost called it the Baby Yoda and I was like, that's not the name of the show. <laughs> but uh, the Disney Plus original series I think have been a big highlight for me for this platform. I was lucky enough to be able to see the Disney Plus um, panel at D23 this past summer, so I got to see a lot of the stuff that was either planned or was already in filming for the platform. So I got to see some of, I got to see one of the uh, Forky Asked a Question shorts, which are hilarious. I just rewatched all of them last night to get caught up and it's just so funny. It's really good. I love Forky in like a non-ironic, non-trashy kind of way. <laughs> Aside from just shows that are catered more towards the younger audiences, there are also a lot of shows that are catered towards the older audiences, like The Mandalorian, which I was scared to watch because I'm a Star Wars fan, but I'm a super casual Star Wars fan, so I didn't really know if The Mandalorian was going to be for me as a fan. So I was a little hesitant to, to watch it, but once I did watch it, I loved it. And I watched every episode pretty much as soon as it was available. Um, so I really appreciated that they understood that not all Star Wars fans know all the lore, know all the backstory, know all the characters by name, and instead took this and kind of made it a separate story that it ties in with the other shows and movies and such but is able to be understood on its own. I appreciated that so much because that was exactly the kind of show that I was looking for. And we got this cute little baby guy out of it. How cute is he? I can't wait to find out more about him in the second season, which was just announced yesterday that is coming out in October. So that gives us all something to look forward to. Also, some of the other shows that are already available on Disney Plus as originals are Encore. Encore is really cool. It is hosted, I guess, by Kristen Bell. She's not usually in every episode, but the basis of that show is that she goes, she slash her team, uh, goes back to high schools 10 to 20 years after they did a performance in high school, and she brings those people back, and they have like a week to relearn the show and then perform it for their family and friends. And that is really cool. Some of them have made me cry. I'm not entirely caught up on that show yet, but I love it. Every episode has just been so amazing and I love watching it. Um, 
I have it open right here. I'm trying to scroll through and see what else. Um, the Imagineering story I'm also not cut up on because they released an episode that had Rise of the Resistance in it before I wrote Rise of the Resistance and I didn't want to spoil Rise of the Resistance for myself so I just kind of stopped watching and then I just never started watching but it's really cool every episode has made me cry it's just amazing to see how far the Disney parks have come and the love and work and the sweat and the tears that have gone into making the parks what they are today the Marvel Hero Project is also one that I got behind on but it's amazing i love that they are focusing on children that are trying to make a difference in our world and are rewarding them and just making them feel special just because they want to help i think that's amazing pixar in real life is also super cute i think when i first watched it they only had like one or two episodes out i haven't checked back to see if they put any more in but i think they're going to if they haven't already i'll have to look back into that um what else have i been watching high school musical the musical the series a mouthful has also been really fun that one i think i still have to watch the finale on but aside from that i love the show i thought it was going to be really cheesy and ridiculous and like really toned down and more for like children children but i've loved it i mean it is cheesy and it is a little ridiculous at times and it's very um love triangly rom-com like teen sitcom kind of show but it also has a lot of callbacks to high school musical which i grew up with so i'm really excited about that and just this morning they announced that they are gonna go on and film a second season and the show that they're putting on for the second season is Beauty and the Beast so that's going to be really cool to see. I'm really excited for that. I'm also really excited for all of the live action Marvel shows and the animated one. I know the What If show is going to be animated and from what we saw at D23 that is just going to be amazing. But the live action shows especially uh, Right around the time that Infinity War came out, I really got back into Marvel. I'd always like been a super casual fan, but once Infinity War came out, I like hit the wall. I was like, oh my gosh, Marvel! Uh, so I've been really into Marvel ever since Infinity War came out in 2018. Uh, so I'm really excited to see what they do with some of the shows. I know Falcon and the Winter Soldier is pretty much mostly shot, or at least very close to it, since they do have their show come out in August of this year. Uh, WandaVision also comes out this year. Originally it was slated for a 2021 release, but they've pushed it up to December this year, so that's really exciting. And of course, me being who I am, I am absolutely over the moon about the Loki series, which hasn't had a release date yet. We just know that it's slated for 2021. They just last week, I think, started working on actual like filming and production, so I'm scouring the internet always to see if there's any behind the scenes photos or videos or anything. Uh, for those of you that don't watch the Super Bowl or perhaps missed it, uh, they actually released a 30 second trailer for those three live action Marvel shows on Disney Plus and there was a lot more footage than I expected, uh, particularly for WandaVision because I didn't realize they had like any footage for that at all. I knew they had some for the Falcon and the Winter Soldier because they showed us some at D23. And so I knew there was gonna be footage for that. But WandaVision absolutely blew me away and I'm really intrigued about the concept of that show because all we've seen is Wanda and Vision in like different sitcom styles. So I'm really excited to see what that show is about and I was absolutely shooketh that they had a scene from Loki, considering it just started filming. Um, it was very short, it was three seconds long, but it was still a scene from Loki. And of course, everyone is already, already, already talking about it and trying to figure out what his prison uniform is, which, if you don't know, and if you're interested, it says TVA, which is the Time Variance Authority which has to do with time travel crimes. So you have that to look forward to if you're into Loki and Marvel. Um, 
I think those are all the Marvel series that are slated right now. I think they maybe have announced that they're going to do more in the future. I don't know. Don't hold me to that. But I really hope they do. I personally would really love a series or at least a reference to uh, the character Hela from Thor Ragnarok. Uh, either in Loki's series or in her own series. I think she's an amazing character and I'd really like to know a little bit more about her than what they gave us in Thor Ragnarok. So I would love to see that. Plus Kate Blanchett is just gorgeous. But that's just me. So yeah, I really hope that they do do more Marvel live action shows in the future and expand to more properties. I know they're doing a few more uh, live action Star Wars series, particularly one about Obi-Wan. I know that one's kind of hit a rut right now, but I think it's still going to happen and I think it'll be exciting because it does have Ewan McGregor in it, who played Obi-Wan in the prequels, so I think it'll be really cool to see him get back into character and be Obi-Wan again. So obviously that's a lot of good stuff that's been happening with Disney+. Plus. But unfortunately, since it is a new platform, there are a few downsides to using Disney+, Plus, so we're going to call them some Disney minuses, and we're going to talk about them right now. Most of the problems that I personally have had with the Disney+, Plus platform is that it's, it's all, like, technology-based. Um, when I got Disney+, Plus, I was expecting a format that was going to be like Netflix. And if you're familiar with Netflix, on Netflix you can like scroll through the screen and you can like hover over a movie or a show and from there you can add it to your list or you can play it or you can do different things. I think you can like like it and dislike it. Excuse me. You can like it or dislike it from that little hovering button on the home page. Unfortunately, you cannot do that on Disney Plus. You have to actually click on each um, movie or show to get to a point where you can either, well, you can play the movie from the home screen, but you can't add it to your list. You can't find out more information about it from the home screen. So I'm hoping that that's something that they fix in the future because it does get a little tedious to have to click on each movie or show that you want to add to your list and then go back and find where you were on the main screen. So that's been a little frustrating. Also I am not a fan and this is totally just me and I found out that sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't but you can't pause the show with the space bar and that it's just that's frustrating to me sometimes I'm like eating or I'm doing stuff with my hands I don't want to be able to just like reach over and hit the space bar to pause a show and I can't I have to use my mouse and click on the pause button and that's just it's more work for me and I would appreciate if I could be able to just like pause and play with the space bar and sometimes I can get it to do that but you have to like slam down on the space bar and that can just be frustrating and time consuming if you're like in a time crunch so I hope that that's something that they are working on I don't know if they're taking like technical um, not support but uh like when you like when they have like a box and they're like leave your comments here what is that called I can't think of what it's called but you know what I mean when they're like leave a comment and we'll talk about it amongst our team and stuff like that a review I guess technically but that's not the word I'm looking for anyways I don't know if that's something that they're working on but I hope that it is because I think it would help streamline the entire Disney Plus experience as a whole um, and I just think it would make a lot of people happier obviously myself included um, one other issue that I've had and it's not just me because I know a lot of people will talk about it uh, Disney Plus has a tendency to list movies that are coming and obviously you can't see that until you've actually clicked on the movie so you'll get excited and be like oh Toy Story 4 is on here, which it is now, but 
you'll see the Disney 4, or Disney 4, the Toy Story 4 little icon, and you'll click on it, and then it'll be like, coming later this year, and you're like, then why did you list it as on the app or the website already? So that's kind of frustrating because it does get a little confusing, and you don't really know what is on the website and what isn't. So I understand where they're going with that though. They want people to get excited about the show and if you're using the uh, like seven day trial, they want you to fully commit and actually keep paying for Disney Plus. So I get where they're coming from. It can just be a little frustrating for those of us that already have subscription or for those of us that are interested in watching certain shows or movies. So I can get why that's frustrating for a lot of us. So yeah, all in all, despite those few hiccups that I have mentioned, Disney Plus has been a really, really amazing site. I have loved using it. Um, I paid for it back at D23 so that I would be ready to go when it dropped on November 14th. Just kidding, the 12th? It came out before my birthday, not the day after. Um, yeah, so I have had Disney Plus since the day it came out. Um, I pretty much almost everything that they keep releasing on Disney Plus, I'm adding straight to my list so that I can watch it because I want to watch everything. I love Disney um, and I haven't seen a lot of like the older movies and the live action movies and the older live action movies. I've seen most of the current live action movies. I think I finally just finished Dumbo which was the last live action one that I hadn't seen so um, I'm just I'm excited to be able to have the ability to consume uh, media that I haven't had the chance to in the past due to not being able to find it either on television or on DVD or VHS so it's really cool to finally have this chance to watch shows that otherwise I would possibly never been able to see. It's also really great to be able to see some of the stuff that I grew up with in my childhood like Kim Possible and I know in the future they're planning on rolling out like uh, American Dragon Jake Long which I loved growing up. It was such a fun show for me and I'm just really excited to just kind of dive back into my childhood and relive my childhood as an adult and maybe even understand things in a different way than I did then. Um, and I'm just, as a whole, I'm excited to see where Disney Plus goes. I know a lot of people aren't a fan of having to pay for separate streaming services to get all the shows they want to watch, but I personally am really excited for Disney Plus. I think they're going to do amazing things, and I think it's going to be really cool to see what kind of shows and content they bring in the future, and I think it's a really good investment if you're a big Disney fan, or if you're even not just a Disney fan, but like if you're a Marvel fan, or if you're a Star Wars fan, or anything like that, I think Disney Plus is a really nice investment, and right now it's only $6.99 a month, which is actually really cheap for a streaming service. And I think there are ways if you buy it for like a year, it's like $10 less or something like that. Uh, don't hold me to that. I don't have the exact prices. And this is not in any way a like paid advertisement or anything like that for Disney Plus. I just really like Disney Plus and I wanted to let you all know some of the pros and cons of having Disney Plus. But I would definitely recommend it despite the few like technical issues that I personally have with the platform. I think it's really fun. I think it's really cool. There's a lot of amazing content to choose from and it's definitely worth your time and your money, especially at such a great price that it's being offered for. So yeah, that is my opinion on Disney+. Plus. Obviously, I'm going to leave it up to you to decide what you do with Disney+. Plus. Some people want to pay the money. Some people want to pirate it from websites. You know, do what you want to do. I'm not here to police or anything like that. I just think Disney Plus is really cool and I hope that you do too. If you have it, let me know what some of your favorite series are so that we can talk about them. Uh, if you're thinking about getting it, leave me some questions and hopefully I'll be able to answer them for you so you can make a better educated decision on getting the platform for yourself. Uh, 
anything you want to talk about. If you want to scream at me about Baby Yoda, or if you want to talk about the Loki show, or any theories that you have for Marvel, or The Mandalorian, or even High School Musical the, Se Musical the Series, anything at all, leave them down in those comments. If you have any other questions, comments, ideas for future videos, I'm slowly running out. Um, concerns for my sanity, go ahead and leave those down in those comments down below. Thank you all so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful week. Bye!